Hello and welcome to another edition of Answer is Live. I'm your host, Scott Kerman, and I'm joined by my usual cohorts, Uncle Joe McLaughlin, and he's JP's first son, Tim Hoey. Well, we have another great show for you tonight. So, boys, let's get it started. We start with the New England Patriots. Look, Sunday's game, I, they're all, look, we only play in 17 games. They're all must wins. So this game against the Chargers was a must win. If you go in three and five and you lose the tiebreakers and the, all the stuff, your season's over. They go into LA. They beat the Chargers in a very impressive victory despite the poor coaching. And they win. And all of a sudden, guys, we're in a playoff race. You know, I can't figure out who is this team. Is this the team that lost to Tampa Bay by uh, two feet of a field goal? Is it the team that got absolutely humiliated several times? Um, no, they got humiliated for, once by the rate by the, uh, uh, but, the but, Saints. Uh, but Scotty, we have seen what they've done. You know, the, the eyes don't lie. We have seen how horrendous this team has been at times, and the, on top of the performance, the coaching has been horrendous too timmy um, they you know, are they're gonna, they're gonna have to prove it to me a couple more games before i before i buy into this joe this team could be, <laughs> this team could should be seven and one if harris doesn't fumble the ball against miami if that field goal comes through and if aguilar catches that ball and scores a touchdown they're seven and one, and no, we're talking about boys. We're talking about Mac Jones is the MVP you know, of the league. Come on, put him what he should have. He's been the Jets and be going to the Super Bowl. You know, no, that's not true. He just he, the team Scotty, is getting I, better every week. That's the that's the important thing. Scotty, I started out really did terrible, like Tim says, but they've improved steadily every week. Last week's defensive performance really had to impress. Absolutely. But, they, they look like the team we expected them to look like all year last week. But are you going to sit here and tell me what your eyes have seen you, have shown you, what you've seen this year? We, I know what I've seen, and I've seen some horrendous football on the games like I've never seen in my life before the Patriots. No, oh, that's no. not true. We've had, no, no, no. Oh, we've what had a bad game. game. I mean, we've had some. That was, that was, okay, I guess I'm permanently. I'm permanently scarred from that game, possibly. You know, that we could be a, 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 mor a, mor a mor that was a mortal wound that game. I'm still recovering from that game. That we had really, we used to have some really porous defenses. Oh, the yeah. Last years. Yeah, um, we've seen them come out. I mean, the year they won the Super Bowl, there were some horrendous games that year by that team. But you know, this, this defense looks like it's a couple injuries away from being bad. So they're, they're very thin. Well, Joe, who is it? What, what, what NFL team's not a couple injuries oh, away? I, I agree, but, but you know, they're already, you know, when they, you know, they made the decision to get rid of Gilmore, and then, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, just thought of Jones. Just Jones gets out. hurt. But that's uh, it. You know, so now you've lost two, two starters there. So they're already on, you know, breathing fumes there. But I got to say, tell you that kid from the practice squad that they got. Earlier in the Bryant, he's been pretty good. Oh my God! I if you remember when they cut him, I was so angry because I, I thought, remember that I thought he played really bad. well last year. They lucked out, um, not having him picked up by another team. Uh, thankfully, they were able to put him on the practice squad. Now he's not going to sniff the practice squad anymore. Who he'll be out the door. No, no, no. He's um, getting the next Malcolm Butler. You know what, it, what, I, what? What I was impressed about this week, this is the team. They performed like what we thought they were going to do all year. A good run game, a stout defense, and Mac Jones playing like a rookie. And that's kind of how he played. He probably had his weakest, excuse me, weakest game of the year. And, and they beat a very good Chargers team. Uh, maybe it's more indicative of the NFL this year. I mean, week to week now, you don't know who's going to win. Well, first of all, we're a team, though, three, three and all on the road. Not many people can say that. Yeah, that's a great point, Joe. Uh, and Mac Jones, yes, when Mac Jones only has 50% completions and we're saying he has had a poor game, we already have a high ceiling for Mac Jones. I mean, he's been, you know, him and the linebacker there uh, have been the two, really, Judon, really, the two 
solid guys they've had all year. Judon's a revelation. Joe, in the 60-plus years of watching the Patriots, who can you compare uh, Judon to and what he, how he can disrupt a game in every level that a linebacker can play? Uh, he's, I, I, I have to go back to Andre Tippett. Tippett as could could Tippett defend the uh, pass? Well, it was a different game then. You, they linebackers didn't drop in the zone as often as they do now. And they almost never picked up people in the end. Right. You know, he didn't have he didn't have four wide. You know. Yeah. He never, he never had like into that empty set type stuff back then. It never happened. Well, look, Judon had one and a half sacks, boys, and nine pressures. <laughs> I, basically, he was in the backfield all game, and we know what I, I, when you have a young quarterback like Justin Herbert, that affected him. There's no question. It was red sleeves. You still see him in his suit. You know that. I think that's an effective little psychological tool too. Well, you have to hand it to Belichick. The two signings of defensive players, big signings in the last five years, Gilmore and Judon, have worked out. Remarkable. And you know who else has worked out? Phillips has worked out pretty good too. Yes, Phillips, yeah, Phillips, defensive player of the week. Yeah, they, they need to uh, sew him up, or I'm sure the Chargers will t- try to take him back. But you yeah, know, he's Williams back. didn't play. Williams didn't play bad either. Great point. I, I, you know, I've loved Williams from when they drafted him. He, with the size he has, he made a nice special teams tackle, and I thought he played pretty well, right, Joe? He he, he was bringing the wood. That's for sure. Joe Juan. Yeah. Joe Wong. Yeah, I thought he had a good game. How you know how many plays did he get in on defense? Ten percent. They, they don't was, play him much. But hopefully he's he still made a off. few good plays though. He made a few yeah. good tackles. Yeah, he's, he's you'll see him on special teams more. But uh, you know they they played well, and I thought uh, Bob Moore had his best game as a Patriot. He was constantly pushing. He was pushing. Herbert right into Judon all the time. Push, push, push up the middle, right into Judon's waiting waiting arms. Yeah, absolutely. Barmore played fantastic. He was a great draft pick. Uh, Belichick lucked out that both of these guys just dropped into his hands. Well, hopefully he gets a little bigger because they can't play him on the first two downs because, well, usually the first two downs because he's too small. And that's getting the weight room and get a little bigger, maybe play to be you know professionally at the tackle position. Otherwise, and, he becomes just a, a pass rush specialist, you know. And the Patriots, when they fumble, you had to hand it to the Patriots. When they fumble, it's a big fumble. It always seems like they're driving to the uh, close to the goal line and then they fumble. Um, that's gonna stop six fumbles in seven games and eight games will not do it. The receivers have been taking turns being terrible. Last week it was Kendrick Bourne dropping the ball in the end zone, and then fumbling. Week before, I'd say it was Aguilar. The week before, uh, John o. Smith had a terrible game. Each week, one of the receivers is just disgraceful. Look, I think Hunter Henry, I know, Joe, you've been tough on him, but I think Hunter Henry, to me, I think he's done a nice job. I think him and, and Mac Jones seem to have a nice connection going. Well, you know, he had to make a connection with somebody. Well, he's got it with um, the wide receiver there. Totally Myers. I mean, and so, you know, th- this, this, this seems to be coming along with Henry too now. I mean, we had to get something out of those tight ends. We, I mean, it seems like one's, you know, uh, a B and the other one's a D, you know, right, right, right. I, But I feel like Janu Smith in the second half, you're going to see a lot more of him if he stays healthy, of course. And I think they're going to continue to design plays like they did in the Jets game for Janu Smith. Yeah, I think you'll see a lot more of the Jets sweet type things. The stuff, he's an H-back. He's all small on Hunter. Hunter's a big inline tight end. Blocks and goes off the path. John was more of a, you know, a gadget guy. The guy who's ending up a big bust because he's never on the field is Trent Brown. I mean, a calf injury, They th- we thought it was week to week. A, a couple of weeks ago, uh, you know, he was working out before the game and people thought he was going to play. And now all of a sudden, where is he? Yeah, it's hard to say. He just uh, cashed the check and disappeared on them. You know, I don't know what the story is here. They're pretty tight-lipped out there in Gillette. But it doesn't look like we're going to see him anytime soon. 
Yeah. And it, you know, they've, they've been playing all right, so. Right, so you, the line play you're happy with? Well, it looks good against, it looks good against smaller teams like the Jackets. You know, they, they look much better against the small teams. But uh, I think they're going to need him when he start going up against the Iron. So yeah. he's going to have to come back at some point. And Timmy, Josh McDaniels, that, I, you know, our phones blew up on our thread uh, with that third and fourth down calls when it was pretty clear they could run at will against the Chargers. And he decides to throw in third down. And in the fourth down, I don't even know what that play is to this. He, he was doing he was, <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> yeah, he did, right? He, he was doing his Pete Carroll imitation, right? Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, I mean, you know, that, I've been scratching my head all year with some of the calls. Those goal line calls where he had uh, Bolden going wide a couple of times. And, he's, you know, he's you're, you're, you're driving the ball. you got a stable of good running backs back there, big, heavy running backs, you know. Steven We've got Sam two and, tight ends who we thought were going to be killers in the red yeah. zone. Yeah. He's throwing and the, and those they, they weren't even close to being successful plays. If well, that's the best you play is terrible. It's that's terrible. the best you have in your bag of tricks. I mean, you, you save some plays just for those moments, and uh, he if seems you're to have do nothing a, in the bag to pull up. If you're gonna do a fade, it's gonna to be to Janu Smith or actually Nikhil Harry. I mean, you gotta do yeah. it to all guys who can fight, not Aguilar. And there was just it was the worst play, I think, in the history of the NFL. It was over before it started, Scotty. Yeah. You know? And Mac Jones didn't even seem like he was into it. No. I mean, he kind of threw it away. Well, you know? how about the one he, he, he threw a poor Hunter Henry the back of his uh, ankle there? Yeah, right. But that was that was where there was going to be the holding call, right? Or was that where the holding call was? Oh, no. He just, he, that was when he had the yips. He calmed down after that. My you know, I did, you know, now, now, you know what I did miss was the, the Belichick challenge. I was hoping somebody could uh, explain that to me. Um, oh, now I can't. Holding it. in the end zone. Uh, Van Noy was being held in the end zone, but the refs pulled the cutie and said, well, that's not the holding we meant, so it doesn't count as a safety. It was hold, definitely holding in the end zone. Go back and look at it. The guy tackles Van Noy to keep him off her. I didn't know. I didn't know. I did not I thought you could only challenge a a, 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 a a pass interference or a play that was called. I didn't know that you could challenge no. a play that wasn't called. No, he was challenging whether it should be a safety or not. This is a scoring play. Not whether oh. it be called. Yeah. So a scoring that's play, that's because it would have been a safety and it would have been a scoring play, he could challenge it. Yeah, he could challenge it. Yeah, okay. the, those referees were, as usual, corrupt. Every time there was, was a safety, it was a safety, no ifs, ands, or buts. But, yeah. they, but every time there was going to be a call that would favor the Patriots, then they would convene and the uh, head referee would try to talk the guy out of it. And the guy had to make some kind of thesis presentation to convince him to call the penalty. Well, uh, they did have to, they did all the charges when on that phony roughing the passer. When, I know, but they made up for it when the guy, they they blew the whistle and the guy had his way with well, yeah. Mac Jones. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, horrible refereeing in all the leagues, it seems like. Oh, there's no question. Uh, refereeing's a joke. we are um, going to be replaced by computers pretty soon. we got to go to, look, the most valuable player on the team, the guy who's played the best is Nick Folk. <laughs> and he was actually <laughs> a valuable player last year too. Well, they do. I'll tell you the pa the Patriots have a knack for picking good kickers. I got to give them credit for that. Well, you drove Guskowski out the door, uh, Timmy. Well, so how's he doing these days? By the way, is he, is he, <laughs> he's, he's, la he's laying on this couch. That he, I never saw anyone fall apart quicker than that guy did. He went from a sure bet to like, uh, oh my yeah, god, close it every time. Close that your eyes. A crowd. A few weeks ago, he was at Gillette watching the Patriots. Was he? And I mean, he was money for he was money for years, and then he started missing extra points, and then he started missing you know short field goals. I mean, he he went down the the drain pretty quick. Yeah, he was. It had, to, it had to it had to be some type of injury that he sustained or something. Yeah, it was a hip. It was yeah. A hip injury. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Vinatieri is going to walk into the Hall of Fame the day he's uh, eligible. No? Vinatieri will, yeah. Yeah, not yeah. Vinatieri will be the only field goal kicker, right? 
Oh no, there's a couple in already. Is Ray Ray Guy? Is is he in there as a punter? He's a punter. Yeah, I know. And I I think it was is he here? Jan Stenerud? Did Jan Stenerud ever make it? Jan Stenerud. How about that filthy, uh, the guy from Oakland there? They used to say he, his George body Blake. order. No, no, the, the other guy with the crazy long uh, European name there. Uh, oh, they say he, no. no, no, not your premium. The guy from Oakland. Oh, Jan, Jankowski. They said, he, he, they said he, he was the... They said he was the smelliest, filthiest human being on the planet. Like the guy never bathed, never used deodorant, anything. He just, oh my just a God, walking, so stinking mess, you know? That sounds so appealing. All right, boys, <laughs> we got to go predictions here. We play the Carolina Panthers. They're four and four, too. Um, they got Sam Darnold as quarterback, who I like a oh. lot. You know, um, uh, What's the spread? Yeah, I don't think is he, is he going to play. He was in concussion protocol. Oh, okay. So who play? Who's who's their backup? I forget who they, they put in there. They picked up a couple of guys this week. So, um, all right, Joe. Yeah. Tell us what's going to happen. What? Do you ever I, I think you're right. Again, like I like I'm just with the Patriots for every game. Uh, I, I'm going to say uh, twenty-one to seventeen. All right, Patriots. All right, Timmy. I'll, 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 I'll say if they're picking a guy off the street to be their quarterback this week, that uh, Belichick will toy with the guy, and there'll be three or four interceptions. Let's go uh, 28-14, Patriots. All right. Uh, What's the spread? Anyone know? I don't know. The professor has 24-17. We want to put that in the books. I got the Patriots. Uh, this is going to be their coming out party, boys. I think it's going to be 31-10, to 10 Patriots. Um, and the, the chosen one is just going to have the game. <laughs> Of his short life. How quickly, how quickly you forget your love, Scotty. Uh, yeah, again, I mean, you, guys you know, what's, of, that, you guys what's, that, what's that song? What's that song by that guy? You're just somebody that I used to know. <laughs> uh, that, you're just somebody. You took all your records back, and you took came and changed your phone number and everything. You know, what I mean? Jimmy Jimmy G is like sulking somewhere right Go now. Dance with the girl that brought <laughs> you. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, go to the Wait, Mac Jones. Mac Jones just has to get some, some kid growth going. Donald getting these guys at a good time. Donald gets concussion, and we got the Titans in a couple of weeks, and Henry's out for the rest. You know, until the end of the year with the foot. Well, so you guys, yeah. you guys didn't even react to what I said. We are three plays away from the Patriots being seven and one. The three plays has nothing to do with the chosen one, one bit. Okay, he didn't do anything wrong. And if they're seven to one, everybody's talking about Mac Jones as the MVP. Would you well, agree? Well, Scotty, you know, no. I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, they gave him a lot of short, safe passes to start out, which rightfully so. I'm not taking anything away from, but are you gonna tell me what your eyes have seen? You know, it, it, you know, I I know what I've watched. You know, they really have seventy percent completions. Well, he's well, going with the pass. If Aguilar doesn't drop the ball in overtime against Green Bay, he could have scored on that play. Here's a win right there. Harris What's doesn't the- fumble. Here's another win. And the third play would be Nick Folk probably. Right. But but what is the average yards? What's what's the average yards per completion? Like four yards, five yards. Timmy oh, has. He has, at, and I'm being kind, would you agree he has, Joe and Timmy, average wide receiving core? Yes. Maybe bo- below, below average. Tim, he has cracked the top 10. He is in the top 10 in, you know, the passing stats. Yeah, it's uh, He's 9, 8, 9, and 10. But he's, you know, up there in all the passing stats now, save, you know, uh, yardage and touchdowns. But how, about, other, yeah, how about yards? Yards per your yards per catch. He's, he's about average on that. Remember, it's a check down league. Look, he's got guys like right Harry now. who, when they catch a ball, immediately fall to the ground. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that's true. It is. Oh, biased, yeah. Matt Jones. Guys, will, Matt Jones will win three MVPs before. Oh, jeez, I think he's getting a little out of it. No, uh, what are you talking about, Joe? First of all, you said you told me that I was crazy about being the MVP, and then you just argue, gave, gave my argument for me. Look, that being in the top ten is 
an argument for MVP. Being number nine in the league and number 10 in the league is an argument for MVP. You're Kyle saying- Murray, you know, um, Stafford, they're all doing way better than him. Okay, MVP of the AFC. Yeah. Well, that's what, okay. I'm trying to find Mac. Mac that's Jones, what I kind of meant. Yards per catch. All right, there. I just want to talk Red Sox. I, 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 you know, I literally could talk Red Sox every show for one straight hour, just so you know. Are so, gonna, who, what are the trades? What are the trades? First of all, I um, want to offer our condolences to the Remy family. Jerry Remy, who was a guest on this show two years ago, who could not have been a nicer gentleman to both myself and uh, Todd and uh, William when we went over to Fenway. Not, great guy, truly a, a legendary broadcaster and an excellent second baseman in some glory years for the Red Sox. Um, he will be missed. No, the guy, guy, he never even pointed out the, the, the awful pair of pants he was wearing. <laughs> no, he did. No, these guys, these guys become part of your family. You're sitting in your living room with them for, for night after night after night, you know. That guy had me peeing my pants laughing so many times when him and uh, was it Don Orsillo, yeah. right? I mean, that pizza throwing episode, I remember that game and I was just. <clears throat> like doubled over in laughter and they just they would get that contagious laugh going and you just you, you couldn't believe you were having so much fun watching a ball game yeah yeah, yeah that's a big giggling the side <laughs> deal like they couldn't even talk at points they were they were just laughing so hard yeah, Remy was a true New Englander he had it from being a curmudgeon oh, in the oh, top to uh um absolutely having our kind of uh cynical humor um great guy Battled a uh, lung cancer like no other. Yeah, I mean, you got to give it to him too. Uh, but that's another, we talked about this before, Joe. These professional athletes, it's you got to bring a lot to take them down. Those guys are fantastic physical specimens. Oh, yeah. Oh. They're, they're cut above everybody else in the world. That's why they win the uh... yeah, Absolutely. They, they can make a, a lifetime career playing a game. And top of the line. So good guy. We offer our tip of the cat to Jerry Remy and his family. All right. So, you know, we're, we're thinking J.D. Martinez. We don't want him to opt in. Boys, J.D. Martinez is not going to opt in. He's clearly his, his agent has been talking to teams. We know that that's how that works. Yeah. Um, he's probably got a, a three year, $70 million deal on the table. Uh, you know what? I could have told you, uh, this guy is a professional hitter. He is, he's the guy I want to see him come up to bat when, when the game's on the line. This, that's the guy for me. Well, then you, you sign him to the contract and trade him to these teams. Well, no, you no, because he can, uh, he, he has the opt in or opt out. He opts out, you know. Um, I think, I truly believe that they're going to make a deal with him. I think they're going to give him a three year deal. Maybe it's at $60 million. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. And then they could trade him if they wanted to. If one of these teams really need wanted him that bad, and like you say, with the National League maybe moving to the DH, he'd be ideal. Right. I think I think a guy. Now. I think a quality hitter of his level. They they just don't come down the pike every day. You know, I think he's a very very good hitter. Well, I don't know. it's a matter of. What you know, look, the Red Sox have always over, overpaid DHs because we have you know the big poppies, the Hanley Ramirez's of the world, and now, of course, JD Martinez. But most teams are, do not want to pay 20 million dollars for a DH. And moving forward, he is just the DH, he's horrendous in the outfield. That's okay. That's okay. You, I loved him sixth in the lineup, I loved him there. It made that lineup fearsome with him sixth in the lineup. There was no, there was no day off. Like uh, uh, Scotty knows he's better than, way better than me. But they do have a couple of some guys they think are going to be elite hitters in Tristan Casas in New York when they hit the major, major <laughs> leagues. So who they won't be paying big money to, and that's more Heim Blooms. <laughs> well, let's let's bring them up and let's see what they can do if they can hit at this level, and uh, yeah. and let's see the be, be, before we give JD his matching papers. I, I like him in the lineup. It's not my money. 
I want him on the team. I want to see him in the lineup. Well, it is your money. Your season ticket. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> your money. But look, I, I have a feeling that Heimblum wants to get out of that contract. I think the idea of giving him $20 million to get to play with when he had $20 million for the whole payroll in Tampa, you give him $20 million to free up. I think he's going to be very, very happy. I think he lets JD walk. That means JD, JD will take another year off like he did last, you know, last pay, year. Pam, what we pay for those tickets, I, I want to see them spend money and put uh, high quality guys. I do not want to see uh, penny pinching, low budget. I don't want to see it. I want to, I want professional good hitters in there for the money we're paying for those tickets. Look, the <laughs> Red Sox need to get more athletic. They didn't need to yeah. see anything, but the, yeah. the Atlanta Braves, and congratulations, the Atlanta Braves who won in the World Series. Um, this is an 88-win team who is very athletic, who got hot at the right times, some clutch hitting, some tight pitching. It's not about the big offense right now. Every It's a copycat league. People are going to go, what did the Atlanta Braves do? Well, they got hot at the right time is what they did. I mean, 88 wins, they are, you know, in a, in a, in the weak national league. I mean, they got, they got hot at the right but time. But they didn't have to play the wild card game, which was a benefit for them. Um, but I'm telling you, we need to get more athletic. Hunter Renfro, Carl Schwarber, J.D. Martinez. Stop me when you like me. Uh, Bobby yeah, Dahlbeck. Vasquez. We are a soft. Well, I, would, I would not put JD Martinez. I, I will athletically put them in that league, but I won't put them in that league as a professional hitter. No, I know, but JD, I'm talking JD about Martinez in a different. You can't Timmy. put JD Martinez in the same com- conversation as as Dahlbeck. They're, they're no, but as the different guys. Well, first oh, of I, all, okay, okay. Let's 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 have an athletic team, but have JD Martinez knocking those guys in. That's what I'll say. Look, we've we saw some bad Red Sox teams, and some with the Mike Lowell's, you know, post World Series oh, that man. clogged up the bases, that yeah. literally could hardly get to the next base, and that's just not going to work over the course of a regular season, and sure, it doesn't work in the playoffs. Well, you can say what you want. I like I like JD Martinez. In this no, I like JD Martinez too, but I'm, I'm saying it'll be very interesting if he does opt out what Hein Bloom does with the money. Hopefully it doesn't go in John Henry's pocket. I mean, J.D. Uh, Devers clogs up the base. He's no speed demon either. I mean, that's no, what I'm he's saying. Fast. No, he's fast. We Devers? need that for the he's Red Sox. Than JD. <laughs> he's a little that's faster, but faster than he's still no JD. speed demon. He I doesn't look up. like you, dude. Yeah, he's not, he's not burning up the base pass. That's for sure. Okay, does Erod... Is he bolting from this team, or did the Red Sox surprise us and actually sign him? You know, I could care less whether they sign this guy. He, I, you don't know what you're getting with this guy. He gave us a couple of good games in the playoffs, but since he's got here, he's been an enigma. I mean, <clears throat> you know, I want the guy. You don't have to baby him. You don't have to coddle him. Just send him out there. Do your job. You know, you don't need a psychiatrist uh, talking to this guy. I think there's got to be something <laughs> better out there for, for, for that kind of money. I think there's got to be something Ooh, better. Hey. Where are you going to get that guy, though, nowadays? It's I know, nowadays, I know. That's, like, that's, that's, I know. It's wrapped up early and often by these teams. Those and, starting you know, pitches. Yeah, I think they're going to try hard to sign them. I, I think that – And all right, so what – what and we're gonna get we're gonna get we're gonna get more of the same. <clears throat> what what's what says he's gonna be different? You know. Look, Timmy, yeah, you're right, Tim. But do you need five starters, six starters? I know. And I would like to see is, him replaced by somebody. You know, as whatever, a little more. Well, I imagine Hulk has been replaced. Is gonna be a starter next year. Don't you think? That's one guy in there. Yeah. Timmy, so, and well, you have a own argument, Timmy that he pitched well in the playoffs means a lot to me. Don't you? It does. I know it does. I know it does. But I mean, you sign a guy, you know, based off of two games, you know what I mean? I mean, those are big games. Don't get me wrong. That's how this works. <laughs> uh, I guess it is. You know, all these guys make their paychecks in the playoffs and a lot of us get sucked into that, you know, and then you're scratching your head halfway through the year going, what were we thinking? You know, I mean, why, 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 why? Well, he's been good in the regular season and there's a disaster in the playoffs. Our number one starter right now made his contract because of the playoffs in 18. Yeah. Would you agree? But, yeah, yeah, but but he also throws 100 miles an hour, too, you know? Look, he's not being vastly overpaid like Sailors. He's no. still getting half of what Sailors did. <clears throat> yeah. 
Look, I, I, I'm fearful that it, whoever pays Erod that he that he's going to figure this is his last contract and he's never going to. Oh, well, yeah, that's that, 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 in mind. Yeah. I, I got it. I, I really, I, you know, if I was another team, buyer beware. Yeah, he might not, he might not do anything. For I mean, you know, you, what, you know, this is him fighting for a contract. Imagine him with a big, fat wad of cash in his pocket. What he's going to turn into? It feels like he'll, a team, a guy who is going to go eleven and twenty-eight in his new team uh, for and, and laugh career. all the laugh all the way to the bank. The you know? Orioles gave him to us, just gave him to us because they couldn't take his craziness. Who, who was yeah. our third baseman that was still paying there uh, with the? Sandoval, we stop paying you. Uh, yeah. Belly bigger than mine, you know. Sandoval got it. We'll get a World Series. He had, he had one of those. He had one of those bellies that hung out. You ever see those guys? The yeah. belly hangs out underneath the t-shirt, even oh, when it's yeah. fully extended, and they got that like six inches of fat laying down there, collected yeah. what twenty million a year, sitting around eating Doritos. We don't want to name names, but he, the guy who. The guy from uh, sitting there the, with the season <laughs> six, he had very similar body. What do you call right? it the, the underbelly. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that's tough to look at. Uh, uh, <laughs> poor, uh, poor friends had a squeeze in next to him. <laughs> <laughs> I know. All right, we go around the. the we'll get uh, off of that. We'll get off that subject. Yeah. <laughs> Catcher Vasquez, do we uh, uh, pick up his option? I think he have to. Yeah. What's he at? What's the option? How much don't? Seven million. I'll yeah. take him for seven million. Yeah. So you, pick, yeah. you pick him up. Uh, I think steady, I steady. think you end up signing him for to a, a three year deal. Unless you got some kid coming up in the ranks who's you know lighting the world on fire. You lock that him up. Six catches and none of them are any good down the mind. Yeah. So you lock him up. So I think they yeah. lock him up for an additional. I think you know Vasquez isn't going anywhere. He I, came I think, up big. He came. You're talking about playoff money. He did pretty good. Yeah, I think he stays. He says he wants to play for the Red Sox. Uh, he already made a contract to get himself some money in his pocket. I think uh, probably three years and nine million probably does it. Corey just overused him this year. That's why he wasn't dead. He was tired. He was way overused. I don't think there's been a Red Sox catcher that caught that many innings in 40 years. Yeah, he's not going. He's not going anywhere. Knows the pitching staff. Knows, like, loves Cora. Uh, no matter, people say they're not peddling him at all. Who's your first baseman next year? It, it's probably Bobby Dahlbeck. Yeah. Uh, which maybe, which maybe Bobby Dahlbeck? Maybe he's just going to be, um, you know, platooned. We'll get someone else, too, you know? Well, Scotty, I you think talk, they're you careful. Talk, you talk, Scotty, you talk about guys we have with the minors. What do we got coming up for that position? Well, just in case is yeah. there. Uh, but I don't think they're not going to give the keys to Tristan cases. I just think that Hein Bloom is worried that because uh, Dahlbeck had a remarkable uh, uh, April, uh, excuse me, August and September, that if he trades Dahlbeck and he becomes a 45 home run guy, he's going to stare at that. And I don't think he wants to do that. I think Dahlbeck's the first baseman. But you know, when Dahlbeck gets terrible up, in the playoffs, I think he struck out every single time. Yeah, yeah, when he got up in the playoffs against solid pitching, it's an automatic out. They just throw uh, – they get ahead in the countdown. And they just start throwing them curveballs down in the dirt. He's dead. The guy yeah, can't gonna... hit – he can hit mediocre pitching. He cannot hit good pitching. Right now, he cannot. But I think they give him – August and September, people don't care as much. The pitching isn't as good. You yep, they're bringing kids up to the farm system, giving yeah. them a tryout. Exactly. He's great. You, you saw what he did when it got down to the, you know, the, the good pitchers in the playoffs. He was useless. All right, we're gonna st- we're gonna uh, we're not gonna go the whole around because I do want to talk to Celtics before we. Wait, what go. about Schwarber? What about Schwarber? Schwarber, at, I He's think. Gonna get too much money behind Bloom. I think that yeah, I think Schwarber goes too. To be honest with you, I think I I think Schwarber and Martinez are not on this team. I think that. Uh, He's happy with the whole combination of Dahlbeck, Tristan Casis, and I think he's going to go a different way with relief pitching. Schwarber's going to get big money, right? Schwarber's going to get twenty million a year, I bet. Yeah, that's not giving him. Yeah, would you say he's going to get twenty million? Oh yeah, easy, easy. Yeah. So yeah, I we don't need what, either. What's he? Twenty nine. Twenty eight years old. Yeah. Twenty eight years old. Oh yeah, you don't get at least twenty million. Yeah. Two-year, three-year deal. He's a 30 home run hitter. 
28 years old. Yeah. Good, okay. good, good, good locker room yeah. guy. He's a, it seems like a good yeah. guy to have on your team, you know? Yeah. And he'll get more than 28 years. Would There's I rather see him at first? I'd rather see him at first base than Darbeck. I'll tell you that right now. There's a lot of teams who have plenty of dough. I think um, he's going to go to Seattle. A team like Seattle or Detroit is always going to sign a guy like Schwarber or Martinez. And they'll be lucky to have him. We got to get, we'll, we'll, so we'll stop at first base and then we'll work around um, next show. Got to go to the Celtics. And oh. I predicted that they were going to be a train wreck this year. Just if you remember, I told you, and, but I didn't think yeah. it was going to be this bad. Uh, just tell me, first of all, let's start with the Jays. Uh, can they uh, work together or does one of them have to go? One Experiment. Of no one, Jalen Brown can't get the ball in the fourth quarter. He had two touches in the fourth quarter the other night. Is this, this because team, they can't they have get the ball in the fourth quarter? This, this team, team is so it's broken. Guard? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm asking to me is it because they don't have a real point guard and all of a sudden Tatum takes the ball. You know, and never comes I back? think it's just Tatum needs to learn how to pass the ball. You know, I mean, he's the black hole. It just goes into him and it's over. I mean, the you know, watching the 80 Celtics, it, the highlights were the passing, you know, watching the great Lakers team. Yeah. It was the passing like anyone can hit a three point or whatever. You know, it was those great passes, the, those players that make their teammates better. The Magic Johnson. I mean, Jordan did it in different ways. Larry Bird, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar made his teammates better. Jason Tatum makes nobody better on that team. Yeah, and then they're able to figure him out with six minutes left. They double and triple team him. He he has this uh, trait of falling, but then he falls. They don't just strip the ball away from him. He always falls. <laughs> I mean, it's just kind of pathetic. Um, yeah, the night was terrible. He's sitting there crying to the refs while the Bulls go down on five on four and score easily. There's something missing in his soul. There's an empty space in his soul that uh, that, that I don't know what's going to fill that space. But well, we were watching a super talented guy too. Just when the you know people who are at the games they say it to me, fans they tell me too. Peyton Pritchard, who's supposed to be a point guard, brings the ball up. He's so scared of Tatum, Tatum that he immediately gives the ball to Tatum whenever Tatum wants it, and then he goes hides. I think he's actually in the crowd. And 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 Pritchard's supposed to be a point guard, and that's his, he feels like his role when he's on the court with Tatum. That sums it up for me. Yeah. yeah, there's no creative, there's no creative creativity out there. There's it's 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 hard to watch, really. It's painful to watch. And how do you give Marcus Smart a four-year extension when he played horrific last year? You gave him something that he did not deserve. Now, all of a sudden, well, once he had a now, he's kind of sloughing off a little. That whole team is at fault. They had zero defensive rebounds in the fourth quarter of the night. Zero. How do you go a whole quarter without accident, accidentally the ball bouncing to you? You know, we thought, this, we, thought, we thought this coach was going to come in and change the chemistry or change something. Uh, it's gone the wrong way. It's gone the opposite way. Yeah, he came in and he says, we're no longer going to complain to the refs. That's all Tatum does. This is yeah, but, about every play. Yeah, he, he mentioned Grant Williams. Uh, same can't. thing. Grant Williams can't complain to the refs, but Tatum and Brown can do whatever they want. I, yeah, I mean, it, that's, that's the story of the NBA. It's that the players are driving the bus. I mean, that's just the way it is. It's, but the it's irony of all ironies, Timmy and Joe, is that Al Horford – has been fantastic. <laughs> I mean, he's a pillar of strength out there. I gotta admit, he oh, has he, been a constant. But he's probably saying, oh "My God, why did I have to come back here and back into this crap show? Like I thought it was bad when I left. It's worse With, now." It was an he thought it was bad. Now he's got this. <laughs> but that ended up being a great trade. Kemba Walker is—I mean, he's about as washed up as any athlete has ever he been. He can't uh, play. He can't play anymore. I, I, Horford, if the team was playing normally, we'd be talking about Al Horford as the MVP of the of the. I, I feel bad for Al Horford right now that he has to walk and sit in that locker room with 
you know, God knows the vibes that Jason Tatum's given off in that locker room. I, I would imagine having to sit next to that guy every game now and, and watch him and, and, and his act. It's, uh, Scotty, the game we went to last year, it summed it up right off the bat. He, he just came over, sat by himself, you know, uh, you know, moped uh, around. And, yeah. and then when he wants to turn it on, he goes, oh, he's fantastic. You know, so that's that's the hard part to watch is you know what this guy's capable of. You, he's as good as anyone in the league when you know when he wants to do it. But when he wants to do it is the big question. Hopefully, they'll start to watch Orford rather than Tatum. Orford's passing the ball. He's boxing out and getting rebounds. He's taking. He's hitting the open shot when he gets it. When he doesn't have it, he keeps the ball moving, sets up and sets a pick, and lets someone else get open. You know, isn't don't you think Tatum would be embarrassed? I mean, he, he's been elevated to this uh, echelon, this high, you know, position uh, league wide on on what he is, and um, don't you think he must be a little emba- embarrassed about his performance, or do you think he just doesn't care? Who's embarrassing him? I mean, the guy. No, well, is he embarrassed himself? Is he embarrassed? No, no, he's, he's, he's doing great. He's got thirty points a game. He's doing great. He thinks. He just he just says the, the look. We saw this in the seventies. Uh, a lot of these in the nineteen seventies, he had a lot of guys like Tatum who'd get their thirty points a game, get the big contract. They could care less what happened with the team. So, so how do we think that whole uh, Marcus Smart diatribe is going to go over? I mean, not well after after seven. Got to look, listen to himself for God's sakes. He's one Marcus, of the worst players. Marcus Smart was a contrib- probably the main contributor to Brad Stevens being sent upstairs because yeah. Marcus Smart won the tug of war uh, from Brad Stevens. Would you agree? His voice became louder. Is he the is is, is Marcus Smart now the you know the uh, you know who was that coach at Indiana that used to throw tables across the the, the Bobby, room and Bobby Knight. Bobby Knight is he just the Bobby Knight now of the Celtics? Like how many times can you hear this guy yell and scream? Let's go, guys! Let's go, guys! I mean, is he like a coach that's worn out that has lost the room? Is Marcus Smart lost the room? Well, Marcus has got to play the full game. You know, he turns it on at certain points, like at the end of the game, he'll make a great defensive play, but he doesn't do anything the rest of the game. You got to do it all game long, Marcus. I, mean, I was, I was, you know, there was no bigger Marcus Smart fan out there than me, but I think it's time for Marcus to go. Yeah, but you know, they continue his value continues to diminish. Oh. I, I don't think he's. I don't think anybody it was so so high two years ago on him. Oh my god! And, and everyone's opinion was like you was Tim. Everyone's opinion was very you know, it, 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 Could he really be the root of all of these problems? I don't no, know. he's not the root of them, but he is. Uh, he's. They have. Tr- they tuned him out as as well as they tuned up Brad. He's a problem. The, the team's a, a major problem. Uh, good luck to them. I don't know how they can figure it out, but I know one. I tell you what, I have half a I have half a Celtics season tickets right now. I can't give them away. Yeah, I said one thing to end the show. I told you they should tank. That's what they need to do right now. They need to try to get a top three pick. And, and bring some nice young talent into this. Hey, because while we're on the subject of, of the TD Garden and the games there, I went into the Bruins game the other night, right? 45 minutes standing in the stairs amongst thousands of people jammed into the stairwells. They weren't even letting people into the main entrance, okay? 45 minutes standing on the stairs. There was almost a riot in the stairway. It, do you know why? It's not because of checking COVID cards. They're, they can't hire enough employees to scan the tickets. To go in, there were there were two ticket booths open for one half of the stadium. There, well, there was almost a riot in the stairwell. We were talking about that the other night. It's so easy to get a job there because it's just very sketchy work, you know. Yeah. yeah. All right, boys. You don't get enough hours in a week to make any money. Adrian wants us to go, and when Adrian speaks, I listen. Yeah. All right, well, that's our show for tonight. We all I want to thank Have a safe trip. behind the yeah. scenes. I want to thank the fellas. Please check us out on our website at thegrandstanders.com and tune again next Wednesday night at 6.30 for another edition of the Grandstanders Live. I'm your host, Scott Kerman. Have a great and happy night.